Hello boys and girls, tonight is uh, Tuesday, May 29th, uh, 2018, there it is, there's the temperature and all that, I'm in Dallas, okay. I'm going to review this uh, GBC RC 443JW, so here we go, alright, good zoom, that's pretty close, alright, so here we go, let me open this up. Alright, open with the bottom. I'm shooting this in mono because this is a mono radio, so I don't need to drag out the stereo monophones or microphones. But, so here's the front of it. It looks like that. It's got a nice big oval speaker, which is a 6x9 speaker in there. Okay, so and it's got a, um, let's see here, it's got a shortwave 1 and 2 medium wave FM and a level meter and a condenser microphone. This is from 1977. So it's pretty old radio here, okay? So here we go. Oh, and it's also, let me one more thing. It's got a, uh, it's got a memory feature that will, uh, if you turn it on set it, and set it to zero, you fast forward your wine, it'll uh, come back to zero and stop, which is nice. So you can find your place to start playing again. It won't start playing again, it just comes back to that position and, and kicks out. So that's a neat little feature. Alright, so here it's got, um, it's got, let's see, what it has? It has a, uh, you're mixing on and off switch. Okay, it has auxiliary in, it has a uh, old timey microphone and remote control there, and then it has your oscillator switch, and then an external speaker, which is 3.2 ohms. I know you can't see that, but that's 3.2. Right. And that's just a complete picture of the end of it there. And then here is the, uh, as best I know, is it's, it's a JVC RC443JW, it's a 12 volt model, 15 watt consumption, world voltage, okay, so 15 watts consumption, 12 volts operation on DC, okay, and that's the full back, that's the back of the battery compartment open, that's the little blue strap in there. Here's the other end. This has got a, a, a DC uh, 12 volt in, and of course your AC. All right, and your tuning knob, and uh, okay. Here's the top. Okay, now the top has got this. Um, I don't know. It's aluminum trim with. Um, I don't know how to describe it. It's just it's, it looks like that. I've, I've seen a lot of radios that look like that. I've seen radios that don't look like that. But this is some kind of. Uh, I don't know how that happens, but this has got eject, pause, stop, play, cue, review, and record. Then here you have your sleep button, radio on, and or auxiliary. So if you plug something into auxiliary, it kicks out the radio. And then you have radio off and tape. Okay, there's model number. Then you have a mixed volume with your external microphone, so you can mix in your external microphone. Then you have your tone control, which is also the mixed volume for the auxiliary on radio, okay? And you have your band selector of medium wave, short wave, short wave 2, and FM. Then you have your volume, okay? And then there's the antenna. Alright, so then there's the bottom. I don't know what that sticker is. It came with the radio. Alright, and there's the back. The screws that come out of it, okay? Cracked it open, and the antenna wire goes there, and it's got two other wires for your battery compartment. Well, there's the uh, that. And then here is just the inside of it. More pictures I took as I took it apart. That's the inside of the back cover. And here's just a overview of what's inside. And then here's a tuner picture. And then here's just up there to see where the screws are at for the chassis. And down here to see where the whatever is down here at this end. And then here's just an angled view to see that before I get into it. This is a very important picture for me because I needed to know where the plus and minus go. This is the plus, this is the minus, and this is the battery connection, and these are the microphone connections. But it's actually pretty simple to take apart if you do get one. It's very simple. Um, once you understand just the screws that hold this in place, it's like five or six screws, and that releases, and you unplug everything, and you're, you know. So there it is, the tape deck has been removed, okay? There's the tape deck out, all right? There's the tape deck, the front side of it, okay? And 
It's got some very nice, great big idler tires. There's an idler wheel and another idler tire, and then the counter belt. Okay. And then here's just a picture of the head. It's got a very robust uh, cassette deck mechanism. It's all steel. It's not cheap plastic like the Panasonic's, I mean, not Panasonic's, the Magnavox and the Philips. Look at this. Robust. This is meant to last a lifetime or more. It's already lasted this long. 1977 till now is what? Uh, 23 and 18. That's. I can't think that fast. Alright. Um, here is the top. It's got a solenoid in there. It's just a top view. I like taking extra pictures just in case. Alright, so there's that. Here I'm trying to take a picture of the date code of the motor. So here let me zip into that so you can see that. It says 06 August 77 W. So I'm guessing that's 1977. Okay. And then there's a picture of the that thing there, and then it's three screws, and you flop it over, and you gain access to this. Just remove this one screw here in the center, and then you can change the belt out. Okay. So there's another picture, and then here's yeah, anyway. Okay. Uh, yeah, it takes an idler, another idler tire right there. Okay, so loves idler tires. Okay, so here's the. Um, uh, the old belt was a bit larger than 5 inch, so I put a 5 inch belt in for the main drive. And then the uh, counter belt was, um, old belt was 3 and 3 quarter inches, so I put it in a 3 and a half inch. That worked great. And then here's just a picture of the tuner. Okay. And of course, oops, the tuner's gone. It came out pretty easily. It's just a few screws and it pulls out. Okay, and then now the next thing you do is you remove the power supply, that's four screws, and it comes out, there it is, and you left with the speaker. <laughs> four screws and it comes out. All right, and there's just the power, so there's the speaker. So that's all it is. Um, and then here's the inside. And of course I took it for a shower, so it got wet, got cleaned. Okay, and then um, I put a little, I put a very extremely light coat of spray paint black. I didn't even get it totally black. I just got it black, you know, better than it was before. So that's a fuzzy picture. So it is a 6x9 speaker in there. This is the last picture. I tried to get a, pic a good picture of the head. So it's not the best picture, but it does have a really good head in there for some pretty good uh, quality sound for its age, considering what the kind of music they like to play present day. And that's okay. And then I got all right. So that's it. So without further ado, let me go back to what's a good picture. Um, yeah, here I guess just yeah, 1977. Well, this thing is old and it still works. So here, let me zoom out. Check the time on this thing. What? I can't see that. Okay, so it's eight minutes and something. All right, great. So, let me zoom out. All right, that's about as far as zoom. So here it is, right here. Okay, okay. I have to, okay, I have to move the camera. All right, so let's move the camera and just manually zoom it. All right. Now, this thing's so stiff, the, the tripod. Uh, all right. I guess that's good. Here, I'll just white out some. All right, that's good. Okay. Uh, I wish I'd shot this more in the daytime, but just too many things. Okay, so what I say? Here's the top of the radio. All right. So hopefully you can see that. Let's see. So flip it under the radio. So. Of course, you have the antenna. So here's the antenna. Pull it out or. Pull it over here.
Oh, sorry. <laughs> that was my last job. Call 1-800-442-JUNK and get cash for your junk car. Want to have a graduation party that's the envy of the entire school? Then get it catered by Chick-fil-A. We all know that everyone... Here's, uh... Shortwave 1, I guess. Shortwave, the other shortwave channel. Not much, well. I don't know. There's medium wave, which doesn't seem to work. But then it's from 1977. It's amazing that this thing still works at all. So I, I'm not too concerned about it not working. Not too concerned about it not working on AM, and I don't listen to shortwave, so FM is just fine for me. But it's not really about that for me. I like to play my cassettes. So now, while I'm at it here, I've here I'll just do it like this. I'm hitting record on this um, tape here, which is a uh, what's this? A JVC. This is the only microphone. I didn't bring out a mic. Do I have another microphone here? Here, I've got some microphones. Here, let me. Okay. I forgot that I put them handy. So here, here is, uh, let's see here. Give me a microphone with, okay. Here's one with a, a switch. Okay. Oh, uh, they're all tangled. Always, never. <laughs> see this here? I just want the cotton picking thing. Okay, there we go. So here's one of these. Real old timey with the little deal. Okay, so let's run it over here and plug it in. Okay, so now you turn it off with the switch so it stopped rolling along. I know you can't see it. Let me get that little fancy light here. Maybe you can see it. Um, there we go. Yeah, okay, so see it rolling along now? Okay, yeah, that's so here I should be talking to this thing so. Let me talk to it while it's uh, flashing the red and blue light. Okay, and then it started about, I don't know where, and then of course I flipped the radio. Well, it was on radio all this time, so it wasn't recording me. So, anyway, just too many buttons and knobs and switches and all that in these things. So, now it's recording me, and I started around 15 or so, so hopefully it'll record because it's, it's moving. Every time I speak, it's, it's moving the needle up here, but the as I experienced earlier today, it didn't, it didn't want to erase over the previous, so let's see how this works. So, rewind. Let's hit play. Well, it was on radio all this time, so it wasn't recording me, so... Just too many buttons and knobs and switches and all that these things. So now it's recording me, and I started around 15 or so. So hopefully it'll record because it's, it's moving. And every time I speak, it's, it's moving the needle up here. But the as I experienced earlier today, it didn't it didn't want to erase over the previous. Now it's my birthday. Okay, so you understand that it does not record terribly well. But it does record, it just doesn't erase the previous recording before it records what you're trying to record. So if you record with a brand new tape, it'll work great, I'm guessing. But I don't have a brand new tape handy. I do, but I'm not going to do that with this machine. Alright, so here, let me kick this out. Alright, so let me give you some real music. Here is some doors. Let me, okay, so throw some doors in. Alright, so... That was tail in some song. Oh yeah. All right. I don't want to sell that music, so kick that out. Throw in what is this? Who knows? Classic message. This is a bad tape, alright, so, 
So here. <laughs> Rewind, let's rewind. Rewind this a bit. Back to the previous. Well, okay. <laughs> okay, you just experienced the uh, the mock, the uh, the zero memory counter thing going back to the zero. So that's what happened there. That's why I stopped before I got a chance to stop it. And I don't have that tape. Here's some John Cougar for to hear. Alright, so I'm sure you've been able to understand that it plays rather well. Sounds pretty good for being from 1977. Let's see here. Let me put in my last little good tape here. Uh, side B. There we go. And, um, let's see here. So hit play. Alright, so now what I want to show you is that we just played that.